Hello and welcome to Seattle Untimely. I'm Charles Armstrong. And I'm Jenny Nelson. And here are some jokes about the news. Last Monday, Governor Christine Gregoire and her husband Mike led a ceremonial striking of the first Washington State Quarters. The Washington Quarter features a picturesque scene of a leaping king salmon set before Mount Rainier. The salmon design was decided upon after much deliberation, narrowly beating out an alternate design featuring the Miss T-plus hydroplane bursting into flames on a drab, overcast day. Safeco Field has announced that up to 80% of food served this season will be free of trans fats, making the stadium one of the leanest in baseball, except this May, when the M's will host David Wells and the San Diego Padres. Seattle Mayor Greg Nichols has proposed new city legislation that would require nightclub owners to obtain an additional permit for serving alcohol after 10 p.m. and to take additional responsibility for legal infractions committed by patrons. A representative from the mayor's office has released the following statement. The mayor is very sleepy tonight and has a budgetary planning commission meeting in the morning. Please stop playing Little Jeezy featuring R. Kelly so loudly. The mayor will also not be cleaning up any puke in Pioneer Square like last time. He doesn't care that your friend is from Olympia and it's her birthday. Here with a comment on this nightclub crackdown is a frosty mug of delicious beer. Thank you for joining us, frosty mug of delicious beer. Thank you for having me, Jenny. Say, you know, this nightclub crackdown is totally lame. Seattle is a party town, and it's time to party down! But frosty mug of delicious beer, lots of people who live near those nightclubs lose sleep as a result of the constant noise. Uh, don't these people have a right to their peace and quiet? Come on, Jenny. Loosen up. Ditch that tie and tie one on. Seattle style! Woohoo! I disagree, frosty mug of delicious beer. I think it seems that people have a right to their peace and quiet. Well, I see your point. By the way, perhaps you'd like to have a sip of delicious beer? Well, perhaps one sip of a frosty mug of delicious beer would be okay. Jenny, no! It's a trick. One sip of delicious beer and you'll be under his spell. Come on, Jenny, just one sip. It won't hurt. G get away from here, frosty mug of delicious beer. Stop tempting me! Way to be strong, Jenny. In other news, the search for a new superintendent of Seattle Public Schools has come down to two finalists, one of whom is Maria Goodlow Johnson, the first African-American school chief of Charleston, South Carolina. When asked if she was prepared for the racial tension surrounding Seattle schools, Goodlow Johnson reiterated that she is from South Carolina, where the state bird is Strom Thurmond, wearing the Confederate flag as a cape. Jason Waller, star of the MTV teen drama Laguna Beach, was arrested at the Waterfront Marriott this weekend for assaulting a hotel security guard. MTV has apologized for the incident, stating that Waller is under a lot of pressure. After all, at 20 years old, he is extremely young to be playing a teenager on television. Recently, the Seattle Aquarium held an octopus feed and release at the waterfront in downtown Seattle. On the scene, Seattle Untimely Field correspondent David Tracy. Hi Charles, we came down to the Seattle Aquarium today for the octopus feeding and release. However, it wasn't at all what we expected. As it turns out, the exhibit has something to do with a bizarre sex ritual with Japanese schoolgirls. It's like a hentai film in there. Needless to say, we won't be able to provide the footage as it was far too disgusting and graphic. However, we have created a reenactment for your liking. Check it out. <laughs> Dave, did you even go to the octopus release? No, are you kidding? It's like 12 bucks. Um, thanks for that. After an extensive... What the hell? Is, it... Is that coming from the green room? Damn it. This is Frosty, what's cracking? Frosty mug of delicious beer? What's going on? Oh, we're having a party, Charles! Woohoo! Well, we're trying to do the show. Can you just turn it down? Oh man, party! Turn it down! Ahem. After an extensive internal investigation, 
Two Seattle narcotics officers were cleared this week of accusations of planting evidence. The probe ultimately determined that the officers are loose cannons who may not always play by the book, but God damn it, they get results. Washington State University Police Chief Steve Hansen was demoted last Friday when a probe of his computer use revealed that he was downloading inappropriate material from the internet. Hansen has maintained that he was doing campus police research, pointing out that it was the girls of the Pac-10 issue and that many of their tattoos infringed on copyrights. The Seattle Supersonics Ownership Group has purchased 21 acres of land in Renton for the building of a new multi-purpose arena. Once completed, analysts predict that the arena will be the first ever reason to go to Renton. Last week, through the marvels of modern technology, we were able to send Seattle and Timely correspondent Charlie Stockman into the future for the duration of his spring break. Here with a report on his trip is Charlie Stockman. All right, so first off, in the future, because of global warming, nobody goes to Mexico for spring break. Yakima's where it's at. Palm Beach, Washington, baby. Wait a minute, isn't that Palm Springs? Dude, they had to change the name. Polar ice caps melted. Yakima's right on the beach. Wait, Charlie, does that mean that Seattle is underwater? Yeah, man. And speaking of polar ice caps, one of them melted while I was there, turned into a wet t-shirt contest with really cold water. It was awesome. Plus, the mind-reading iPod nanobots they replaced sand with were all playing put them on the glass. So. Wait, just a second. So machines can read your mind? Yes. And in the future, that song is in everybody's head. So it's all the nanobots play. So it's always in your head. Whoa. Paradox. Anyway, because I'm from the past, they let me and Roach judge the wet t-shirt contest. Hey, Charlie, we don't know who Roach is. Who's Roach? Roach is the first mutant president, man. Anyway, the contest came down to these two girls who were both super plus freakazot. Wait, super plus freakazot? What, what's that? That's Newspeak, comrade. Totally dystopian, right? It's the language of the party. So anyway, I didn't know which of these girls to vote for, man. It was another time traveler's paradox. No, that's, that's, that's not a paradox. Well, let me finish my story. It was a paradox because one of these chicks was totally my daughter. So I was conflicted. So instead, I decided to take a photo of that hoe. Gonna show it to when she's five years old, blow her mind. But as I was taking the photo, another nuke went off. Wait, so just a minute. Another nuke? Oh yeah, dude. There is hella civil drama in the future. But check it, the nuke made all the girls like, end of the world horny. And it was just the nuke, this is the best part, that me and Roach had set off earlier, remember? Oh man. Wait, Charlie, you, uh, we don't know what you're talking about. You didn't say anything about that. Oh, didn't I mention about how me and Roach went back to kill the leader of the nerds, who in the future were forced underground, but we totally fucked up? <laughs> no. Oh man, it was a total paradox, baby. Oh man. <laughs> paradox. Well, that's just about all the time we have here at Seattle Untimely. Incidentally, we'll be taking a few weeks off to revamp the show. In the meantime, if you're interested in sponsoring our program or just want to get in contact, feel free to email us at seattleuntimely at gmail.com. Remember, Seattle, if you did... Hello? Hey, hey, dude, it's me, the mug you love to chug. Frosty mug of delicious beer, where are you? Dude, I'm, uh, uh, I don't know, dude, but you should come over here. No, I can't. I'm trying to finish the nude. Hey, is Jenny there? Yes. Dude, tell her I think she is totally hot. I, I don't think that's a good idea. Dude, come on, just tell her. I'm sorry, Frosty Mug of Delicious Beer. I'm not going to tell her that. Look, I've got to go. Uh, dude, Charles, I love you, man. That's great. That's great. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? D do you know where I can score a bag of... Anyway, as I was saying, remember, Seattle, if you didn't hear it from us... You shouldn't have been listening in the first place.